I'm joined with Dr. Van, Van Brown. And uh, he's an amazing man of God, and, uh, and I love him. His heart is definitely pure. He's one of the purest people I know in terms of intention and how he goes about things. Definitely you see the love of the Lord Jesus through him. Amen. Amen. I appreciate you, Dr. Van. Thank, Thank you, Papa. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, amen. So, uh, uh, we're not going to be on for too long, uh, but I'm going to teach you something that I believe that is going to be very helpful and joined by the doctor. is going to be very effective, and then later we're going to talk about a project that he's doing in Bahamas that I'm also involved in. Uh, that will be a blessing to a lot of people in the Bahamas. So uh, yeah, no. we, can, we can make a difference there for the kingdom of God. Um, I want to talk about realm of riddles and dark speeches. Realm of riddles and dark speeches. Realm of riddles and dark speeches. Now, whenever you're walking with God, and I'm going to teach you this as a prophet because this is, a, this is a prophetic teaching. And uh, I am going to teach you as a prophet. Whatever calling God has given us, it determines also the information that God will give us. God cannot give me information concerning or unknowing about evangelism, and I am called to teach. Mm. I will be more of an expert in teaching the doctrines of God versus how you win souls on the streets. Mm. So no matter what God has called you to do, in that realm, God will empower you with knowledge because that is the realm of your functionality. Mm. Many times, uh, uh, men of God, women of God, who mean well, get this area wrong because we try to teach what is not given to us. Whenever we try to teach what is not given to us, we actually endanger people because we do not have experience for what we are claiming expertise for. Mm. And what ends up happening is we end up causing more damage in the kingdom of God than help the people of God to rise to the place of their calling. Mm. There are things I will never teach about because it is not my calling. I don't have the grace for it. I will learn from other people. But me to stand and teach it, I cannot because it is not my calling. But when it comes to the prophetic realm, that is my world. Mm. I was born to do it. I did not receive the gift. I received the calling before I was in my mother's womb. Mm. I was born with this thing. So it is a life experience with God which I have learned dimensions and levels and how it truly operates in order for me to also be able to help the prophetic people of God and even born prophets who are still learning. You see, walking with God is not just a matter of I prayed, I read the word. No, everything about God is about experience. Mm. I'll say that again. Walking with the Lord, knowing the Lord Jesus is primarily about experience. If you look at scripture, the Elijahs, the Moses, uh, um, uh, uh, the, the Enochs, they had no Bible, but they could hear from God, they could talk to God, they could talk back with God without scripture. Mm. How were they doing it? It was their calling. Mm. They were prophets. They understood things that was not given to everybody. So the key here is don't think just because you did not hear something in scripture, it necessarily means it's not from God. Mm. That is deception in itself. Jesus. The Bible itself tells you that if everything that the Lord Jesus did was written, there will be so many books that there will be nowhere to keep them. But what is written is enough that the word of God was given for sound doctrine, for, for solid foundation, for rebuke, for correction, for the building up of the saints. So what is given is a glimpse of a lot of things that have not been shown. The Bible says that I desire that above all you may all prophesy. But the Bible doesn't teach you how to prophesy. The Bible says lay hand on the sick and they shall be well. But there is a way to lay hands on the sick in order for people to be well. I have seen people lay hands on the sick and they are the ones that become sick. 
Mm. I have seen people trying to cast out demons like the sons of Sceva, and they end up being possessed by demons. So this thing is systematic. Listen to me clearly. It is systematic. It is systematic. It is given to whoever is called to a certain area. When, uh, if, if you look at the New Testament, there are men like, uh, I believe his name is Agabus or something. He was a prophet in the New Testament. They prophesied, they did these things. But what they said was not recorded in the scripture. So not everything that uh, uh, um, is, is not written, it means it's ungodly because a lot of Christians have that mentality. If it is not in the word, then it's not from God. That is not necessarily true. Mm. I am sorry. I'm sorry to bust your bubbles. That is not necessarily true. It is deception in itself. How do we identify something is from God? We must carry the spirit of God in order to know his voice. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice. If you hear the voice of your shepherd, you should be able to recognize it. Not because it is written somewhere, but because you know his voice. Yes. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. This is necessary because if this part is not taken care of, if this part um, we don't pay attention to, what happens is we fall off with God. We fall off with God. Most of the prophets, the Isaiah, the Daniels, in their time when they spoke on God's behalf, many people doubted them. Mm. But when the outcome came, they said, wait, we got to pay attention to these people. So to be doubted is normal. Nothing wrong with that. But you must understand that everything from the spirit of God, the Bible says the spirit of God bears witness with our spirit. So the spirit of God must bear witness, not your feelings, mm. not your thoughts. Not because you agree with it. Listen, God is God whether you agree that he's God or not. Mm. You will die and you will pass like grass and God's word will still remain. Amen. Whether you want to worship him or not, it doesn't even matter. You may not, don't even worship him, he's still God. Amen. <laughs> you can reject him if you want. You can turn your back on him if you want. He does not change the fact that Jesus is Lord, period. Whether you like it or not, Amen. King Jesus reigns forever and ever and ever. Amen. So this is not... This is not subject to, I understand it, I don't understand it, I like it, I don't like it. It's irrelevant. Mm. It's irrelevant. Absolutely irrelevant. I want you to let everybody know that we are alive and, and we are going to go deep into this thing. And what I love about uh, um, walking with God is that you can track your progress. Mm. This is the beautiful thing about walking with Jesus is you can track your progress. You can identify where you are and where you are not. Oh, I wish somebody could hear me. <laughs> you, can identify, you can identify where you are and where you are not. You see, I have a lot of spiritual sons that are prophets and some that are apostles, some that are evangelists, some are, are pastors, some are, are, are teachers, and some are just great believers with a prophetic unction on them. But so many of them understand where they are. Mm. That is why they need somebody with more experience to raise them in their walk with God. You see, if you don't know where you are, you will not know who you need. Mm. Many people, so, so many people have no need for people because they are nowhere. Mm. Somebody who's not going somewhere, somebody who's not going after anything, doesn't need anybody because they are stagnant. But the moment you have to make steps, the moment that you have to grow, the moment that you have to move forward, you need somebody. Oh, brothers and sisters, you need somebody. Mm. it becomes very, very clear yeah. that you need somebody. Yeah. If you ever meet somebody that has never been mentored, has never been taught, mm. who just does things on their own, run away from them because they are dangerous. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> if the Lord Jesus needed instructors when he was young, mm. if the Lord Jesus needed John the Baptist, the Son of God needed John the Baptist. Jesus. Who are you? Do you know I needed John the Baptist? Because he came to fulfill the law of the prophets. He came to fulfill, sorry, the prophets and the law. The law and the prophets. Jesus came to sum up all of it. Mm -hmm. The law and the prophets. This is why Elijah appeared to him representing the prophets. And Moses appeared to him representing the law. That is why in scripture, Moses, even though he is a prophet, he is not considered a prophet by God. Mm. He's considered beyond the prophet. Mm. Uh, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. The Bible says Moses and the prophets, because when you see Moses, you see the law. You see Elijah, you see the prophets. Mm. So Jesus needed to fulfill the works of the prophets and the law of Moses. So he needed Elijah because Elijah was... Uh, he needed uh, John the Baptist because John was Elijah on the earth. He needed the rite of passage. So you need to understand as a child of God, if you are going somewhere, you need to know where you are in order for you to know who you need. I have seen great people with great promise, with such great future destroy and self-sabotage, not the devil, themselves, because they thought they were where they are not. They are like a ticking time bomb that they destroy themselves. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. This is why we have stages, we have levels, we have dimensions in God and in areas so that, let me just make it simple, that's why God gave us leadership. When you understand the power of leadership is because you know where you're going. This is necessary. Sometimes people think they are so wise that they think they are wiser than God without thinking that, without knowing that they are doing things that they portray, portray themselves to be wiser than God. They will say things like, oh, you just need the word of God. You don't need any man. You don't need this. You don't. You, Jesus is telling you, I have given you apostles, prophets, evangelists, and teachers yes. and pastors for the perfecting of the church until my coming. You're saying, no, you don't need any of that. So who should we listen to, you or Jesus? But you see, all this is because you don't know where you're going. Right. No idea. It takes vision, not from God, vision of yourself to understand what you need. I, I, I'm going to teach in a second, but I believe this is blessing somebody. Yes. I am somebody that if... I am going into a territory I don't know. Mm. I will completely submit myself and commit myself to whoever is teaching me in the realm that I do not know. Right. That is my nature. I will not go in there and try to be uh, outsmart you. I will completely be on yes sir, no sir mode. Mm. To the point that um, my Muay Thai coach always laughs at me. Sometimes he tells me, Lovey, you don't need to say yes, sir. <laughs> you don't need to say no, sir. Just say yes, but I'll say yes, sir. <laughs> because for me, I have such respect for authority because I understand what it takes to lead people. Jesus. And I also know how good I want to be. And because of how good I want to be, I better listen to this guy who's been doing this for 20, 30 years. And I am barely just getting started. And he is the teacher who has taught champions and things like that. Man, I better humble myself and listen. That is wisdom. You can never lead if you have never been led. You can never lead if you have never been led. I am the best student I know. 
If I have to learn, I'll, I'll completely forget I am prophet. I'll completely forget that and I sit down and I just learn. Great men of God always have one testimony about me. They say, man, this guy listens. I will ask questions. I will ask great questions. There are great men of God that if I call right now, they'll just say, they'll just, a uh, prophet, uh, he asks a lot of questions. Because I inquire all the time. I will ask and ask and ask and ask. I don't stop. Because I want to make sure I get what I need to get before I lose you from my sight. <laughs> Who knows where God will take you next? Right. I want to learn everything. So today we are going to speak about realms of riddles and dark speeches. Realm of riddle and dark speeches. Now I want us to go to the book of Numbers very quickly. Uh, Bishop Datiwan, if you have anything to add, you can go ahead. Uh, Numbers chapter 12 from verse 6. I'll read this one. Okay. Numbers from chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12. And verse 6, now, this is a story about um, Aaron and Miriam and Moses. Miriam was a prophet before Moses. And Aaron was a priest of God before Moses. Both of these people served God before Moses came in the picture. Yes. They knew of God before Moses. But Moses was in a different dimension than both of them. But Aaron, the Lord said unto Moses, Aaron shall be a prophet unto you. Even though Aaron was a priest, he also functioned as a prophet because he heard the voice of God. So I want you to pay attention to this. He says, this is the Lord saying, and he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and I will speak unto him in a dream. I will make myself known unto him in a vision, and I will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in my house. With him I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Mm. Now there's an issue here because God is pointing out something. God is saying, if they be a prophet among you, I'll speak to them in visions and in dreams. I will make myself known unto them. But my servant Moses is not like you guys. With him I speak mouth to mouth, face to face. Even my appearance shall he see. Then he goes on to say, with him I don't speak in dark speeches. Dark speeches. Because he is faithful in all my house. Mm. Now, we are not all called to be prophets. I feel like this is prophetic school, but I will start on it. <laughs> As, have the registration begun or not yet? So if you haven't registered for prophetic school, go to the website. It's coming up the end of the next month, August, yeah. We are not all called to be prophets, but we are all called to be a prophetic nation. We are a prophetic generation because yes. the Bible says, I desire that you may all what? Prophesy. The Bible says in the last day, I will pour out my spirit and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your elders shall see dreams. So these are dimensions and levels within the revelatory gift called the prophetic, mm -hmm. Right? Now, if you ever hear from God, whether in a vision 
or in a dream. And I will prove to you that, let, let, me, let me before I go on, remember I will talk about vision. Let's go to the book of Daniel. <laughs> let me help you quick before I make my statement. Daniel chapter 9. Verse 20, from verse 20. Uh, who else has a microphone apart from Bishop Datiwan? Uh, I want uh, Auntie Eva read this one. Daniel chapter 9, verse 20. from verse 20. Let's get a little flavor. Daniel chapter 9, mm -hmm. verse 20. Yes. And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel mm -hmm. and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God mm -hmm. for the holy mountain of my God, mm -hmm. yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, mm -hmm. being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening ablation. Uh -huh. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Uh -huh. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Stop right there. Daniel is a great prophet, powerful prophet, powerful prophet. He's in the presence of God after he saw a crazy vision. And he did not understand it. Seeing a vision doesn't mean God is speaking to you clearly. Mm. <laughs> oh, I just messed somebody up. <laughs> Seeing a vision doesn't mean God spoke to you clearly. Jesus. Just the same way dreams can throw you off. Mm -hmm. It is the same exact way you can see a vision and not get understanding. Mm. Daniel is in the presence of God. Shandala Baba, Father, forgive me. Cleanse me, O oh Father, for my sins and the sins of my family and everything I have done. O oh Jehovah, have mercy. While he is praying, Gabriel appears to him and says, Oh, uh, I came to you because of the vision you saw you didn't understand. Now I have come to give you insight and understanding. Mm. It takes sometimes somebody else to tell you what God was trying to say. Mm. Jesus. The only prophet that never went through this is Moses. Mm. He's not the only. Let me take that statement back. But let me say Moses never went through this. Mm. So, seeing a vision, seeing a dream. If riddles are involved, it is what God calls dark speeches. It is not clear language. Mm. I dreamt and I saw myself swimming in the sea. <laughs> Number one African dream interpretation, marine spirit. <laughs> Usually. It doesn't necessarily, you see the thing about interpretation is that it is not exclusive. Right. That's a lie. It is not that general. Or if you feel your hands are itching, it means money is coming. I mean, it's a cool idea. <laughs> you can take that prophetic and say, in the name of Jesus, wow, money cometh. Right. Nothing wrong with that. But to say that that's what it always means, no. Right. Maybe you are just sweating a lot. Maybe you got chicken pox. <laughs> Maybe you have chicken pox. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop Van. <laughs> <laughs> keep sharing and keep eating those thumbs up. <laughs> Is this blessing you so far? Yes. yes. <laughs> so what does it mean? The Lord Jesus said this, right? His disciples came to him and they said, Lord, why is it that you speak 
in parables and in riddles to these people. Jesus looked at them and said, For you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So there, there is a dimension that God becomes naked to you. What does naked mean? God becomes open mm. to you. But the reason why God would choose to speak to somebody in dark speeches, it is a measurement of your faithfulness before God. Wow. Wow. Oh, somebody didn't like that. That's good. There are people who have been graced. Even prophets are in levels. Prophets are in dimensions. A hundred percent. I know prophets that are more accurate than others. I know prophets that are more powerful than others. I know prophets that can mention your whole family since I don't know when. I know different <laughs> kinds of prophets. Right. All have different shades and different colors. But the manifestation of God is always not only by his grace, because grace is the main reason you're getting anything. Amen. Everything Amen. is by the grace of God. Amen. But there is a part of faithfulness that one needs to have in order for God to be plain with them. You see, God tells this to Aaron and Miriam. Not so with my servant Moses. With him I speak face to face and mouth to mouth. Even my appearance shall he see. Because he is faithful mm -hmm. in all my house. Mm. Your inability to understand your dreams and your vision is primarily because of your faithfulness before God. Ah, oh, so uh, okay, I'm going offline. <laughs> Let, can we go? <laughs> I think we should go. And, and yet, Papa. There are things that Daniel could understand when the finger of God wrote on the wall. Mm -hmm. He understood the interpretation. It was God's own tongues. He understood the interpretation. Clearly, he knew exactly what God said. Mm -hmm. But this vision thing threw him off. Dreams, he was a master of understanding dreams. Dreams were clear to him. The, book, uh, the king says, I'm going to kill everybody if I don't get what my dream is and the meaning. He says, give me three days, I will tell you. The first night he prays. The Lord visits him in a dream and shows him the dream and tells him what it is. He goes and tells him, this is what your dream is and this is the interpretation. Mm. So we see in an, there are areas that he was comfortable because if you look at Daniel's uh, primary, primarily what he functioned in, in was dreams. He was a powerful prophet in the realm of dreams. Mm. Extremely strong and powerful in that dimension. Yeah. Visions were not very strong yet. And the reason why they were not very strong yet, you have to remember Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abed Negro, <laughs> they grew up away from home. Yes. They did not have their mentors. It is by the grace of God that they rose the way they rose. They did not have somebody to teach them. Their fathers, uh, Jeremiah was gone. They were taken into slavery. They grew up in a different culture, but the little they knew about God, they held on to it. That's what made them mature, but they did not develop in the speed they would have uh, developed in if they were still back home. Mm. This is why you should never take those God has sent to you to train you for granted. Mm. Jesus. So, the number one reason why there is a lot of dark speech that the Lord will communicate to you It is primarily, you have to check your level of faithfulness to God and in his house. 
Daniel got interpretation of his vision, not because he prayed. In fact, at that time, he saw a vision he did not understand. He was busy repenting. But when Gabriel came, he said, you are so esteemed by God because of your faithfulness before God. Mm. I have been sent to you. There was a command in heaven that Gabriel, you must go and tell my servant Daniel, who I highly esteem, to know what the vision I just showed him means. Mm. You see, let me read something for you that I love this passage. Please. Everyone should dream dreams, by the way. Amen. Everyone should. Kalabashata. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Go to the book of Job. Job chapter 33 and verse 14. Job, Job 33 from verse 14. Job 33, 14. Yeah, Bishop, uh, actually, Eva, your voice is sweet. Everybody is complimenting you. <laughs> Job 33, 14, right? Yes. Yes, let's, let's hear that again. Job 33, 14. Mm -hmm. For God speaketh once, mm -hmm. yea, twice, mm -hmm. yet man perceiveth it not. Mm -hmm. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, mm -hmm. then he openeth the ears of men, mm -hmm. and sealeth their instruction, mm -hmm. that he may withdraw man from his purpose, mm -hmm. and hide pride from man. Stop right there. The reason why you have dreams is because God spoke to you, you are not perceiving. God tells you one time, he tells you two times. He says, this guy's not understanding. So I have to speak to him in dark speeches, in their realm, in riddles that will make him at least curious. So God gives you dreams, not because he wants to. Uh, I'm done. These people are not happy. This is deep teaching. God is sending you dreams because you don't listen. Do you know what it means to perceive? You're not capturing it. You see, when I am prophesying, there is a look I have when I'm hearing from God. I'll be ministering, then there's a time I will be at a certain posture. If you look at my face, my face is very intense. At that moment, I am perceiving what he's saying. I don't want to wait to dream. Mm. If I miss it there, then it means I have to dream about it. But by the time I'm dreaming about it, it's already gone. Mm. That's good. See. I dream a lot. It means you don't listen. <laughs> it is not necessarily a good thing. We, we, we thought it was a good thing. <laughs> Do you really think I want to send you videos all the time mm. for you to hear what I'm trying to say? And when I send you these videos, I'm doing sign language. It is round. <laughs> it's the color orange and it has juice. <laughs> it's on orange. Yes. Yeah. Now, 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 now. You, 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 you should, God doesn't want to talk like that. Who wants to talk like that? Mm, that's deep. If you look at the beginning of scripture, is that how God spoke to Adam? No. God just came and Adam could perceive God. God would come sit down. Adam, how was your day? Ah, my day was deep. Mm. Today I saw this plant and it was like, ah, that's cool, cool. What else did you discover? Tell me. Mm. Okay, did you know this? Did you? That's how God, even when Adam sinned, he still could hear the footsteps of God. He still knew the voice of God. Mm. When uh, 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 their sons grew up, mm -hmm. uh, um, what's Abel and Cain? And Cain, Cain yeah. and Abel. Cain and Abel were born in the world of sin, but Cain and Abel could hear God. Yes. How did the Pharaoh of Egypt, an evil, wicked man, an evil, wicked king, 
God wants to bring drought on the world. He speaks to that Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh perceives the dream. He didn't hear the voice. He just saw a strange dream. And it bothered him so much. He got interpretation, but he said, this is not it. Mm. It is because the realm of him hearing God was low. So you are a Christian. God is speaking to you at the same level he spoke to a king of Egypt that doesn't know him. Mm. Uh, no, you, did, did you get what I just said there? Yes. <laughs> if I am close to God, he should not speak to me the way he speaks to the world. Mm. No way. Heck no. 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 Wow. No. <laughs> no way. He should never be like that. No, is, is, isn't that right? Yes, Papa. Think about it. Why would God speak to me the way he speaks to a man who has never worshipped him, has never served him, will never serve him? Mm. Even Nebuchadnezzar saw riddles. He saw the finger of God writing on the wall and he did not know the meaning. Mm. You know, I just see things. I, I just... It is not necessarily a good thing. Mm. You see, when Paul, no, Peter, was praying mm -hmm. at an upper room, he fell into a trance and God came to him and told him, and he saw unclean animals. Mm -hmm. And God told him, kill and eat. He said, how can I eat what is unclean? God told him, don't call what I have made clean, unclean. Mm. When he came out of the trance, people knocked at the door of Joppa. He said, we have been sent by a guy called Cornelius. He said, you'll be here. Then he said, now I know what God was saying to me. He was talking to me concerning you guys and the man I'm going to see. Mm. So he left and he went with them. Notice he did not understand the interpretation when he saw the trance. Right. He understood the interpretation when the fulfillment yeah. of the trance came to pass. Mm. That he understood God wanted to send him somewhere. Do you know why he had a difficult time understanding it? Because even though Peter was not a Pharisee, mm. you see Paul having a problem with Peter. Telling him, why are you sheep, sh sheep shifting? When you are with the Jews, you are acting like the Jews. Mm. You are taking on their doc doctrine to fit in. My brother, it should not be like that. We have been liberated from this. I am a, a, a Pharisee of Pharisees, and I don't even behave like them. You need to change this. He rebuked Peter. Mm. You guys were with Jesus. You saw Jesus, and Jesus wanted the whole world to be saved. Me, I am the one who knows the law, but I wasn't even sent to the people of the law. I was sent to the Gentiles. Mm. And you who did not know the law... You have been sent to the people of the law so that you can show them that God can speak to you outside of this law stuff that you guys have been fighting for. And I who knows the law have been sent to people who have no clue about the law. Then you see Paul telling them the circumcision that God wants is not of the foreskin. It is of the heart. But Peter and them who are not the religious people are the ones who are fighting for religion. So when God wanted to speak, he could not speak to him. He spoke to him in a trance. In a dark speech. Jeez. Because inside of him there was already resistance. Oh, wow. mm. oh I, I, I feel. The thumbs up are discouraging to me. We are almost 2,000 people and the, the thumbs up are really low right now. Thumbs up, thumbs up please. Jesus. This is prophetic school. After this, we are taking this down. <laughs> this is prophetic school. Prophet Romel, is it not true? This is deep teachings. You know, these things I'm sharing with you, 
I wish I knew when I started walking with God into my calling. Mm. These are things I had to discover along the way. Why is it sometimes in these areas I'm not hearing clearly? Why is it in this area I can hear perfectly? Mm. So people usually pray, oh, Father, make me to hear you clearly. No, 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 no. Mm. It is unfaithfulness. Mm. To be unfaithful to God is not that you're not serving his purpose. Mm. But faithfulness is the desire to know who is speaking to you. Mm. Is the desire to know whom you are serving. Okay. If I am not chasing after my boss, mm. after my Lord, after my Savior, in order to know what he likes, what he doesn't like, what he, what he sees, what he doesn't see, what, how he perceives things, how he thinks of things, I am unfaithful to my relationship. Mm. Jesus. That's good. I am unfaithful to him. Yes. And if I am unfaithful to him, how is he going to speak to me the way he likes to speak mm. when I have not risen to the place in which he wants me to speak, mm. in which he wants to speak? Jesus. You see, the clarity of the spirit comes by spiritual growth. Mm. When a baby is growing up, you don't sit down and tell them, today I went to work, it was very difficult. A baby will not understand you. Right. A baby wants, oh, they got the baby, the baby, the baby smiles, happy. That's the level of communication you can have. Right. The more they grow up, you start saying, okay, come here, go there, come here, no. Then when they get to 16, 17, 18, you start now reality of life. Then they can actually start understanding things. But there are things they won't understand until they're in their thirties themselves. Yes. Then they'll be like, ha, ah, what mom and dad were telling me is deep. Now I'm in my own house. Ah. Right. I was taking these things for granted. Now I understand. Right. So notice the insight and understanding is increasing according to the growth. And we know people who are so mature. Mm-hmm so grown, so knowledgeable, but are completely babies when it comes to life. Yes. Their capacity to comprehend and understand is just like, man, how am I going to help you, man? <laughs> right. Go left, they will do right. And then when he fails, they come back, oh, but I went right. I told you, go left. Mm. Mm. They'll say, sorry, this time I will do it, then they will do it again. I don't know why I keep making the wrong choices. No, you are not trying to grow up. Jesus. Man. Jesus said, be childlike. He didn't say childish. Mm. Jesus said, be childlike. He did not say, be childish. Mm. Childish people don't make it to heaven. Mm. Childlike people do. Childish, no. Is this making sense so far? Yes. So capture this by, by the Spirit of God. Try to, try to understand this by the Spirit of God. Faithfulness mm. is the primary reason. Primary reason. Your heart, hearing you cannot hear, perceiving you cannot perceive. Because the moment you are not... Okay, let's take an example. These beautiful flowers we have on set, right? There's water in the vase, right? Is it called vase or vase? Okay, whichever one. Vase sounds more classy. (laughs) Just like instead of target, you say what? Target. Thank you. (laughs) So, if you're not faithful to make sure water is in there, they're going to die pretty fast. Yes. Right? Yes. So if you're not watering 
your growth and your relationship with God. Mm. It will also die. Mm. But you see, the problem is you have limited hearing God, walking with God to just play some worship music. I was spending time with, uh, with my brother um, last night, one of my brothers in the Lord. His name is Pastor AJ. And he so desires to walk in a dimension of power and hearing God. And I sat down with him last night. I took him to my prayer room. He always asks beautiful, uh, beautiful uh, uh, questions. And I taught him a thing that I won't mention here. Maybe I'll teach it in prophetic school. I taught him how to engage with God. And I told him, okay, do this and do this and do this. I'm waiting for Uncle Fred to, to become a, a holy archangel so I can show him this. <laughs> he likes too much techno music. <laughs> I'm joking. That's a joke. But I sat down with him in my prayer room. Uncle Fred has been there on the floor. He sat. In my prayer room, there's only one chair. Usually, once in a while, I will sit there, but I rarely sit there. I'm usually in my knees there before God. And he sat on the floor. I told him, okay, do this, do this, and do this. And I watched him begin to sweat. I told him, shh. Say that. I told him, imagine if you can learn to maintain this, how much more your inner man will grow mm. and how effective you'll be for the kingdom of God. If you can maintain this and know how to do this consistently, there is no sick person you'll touch that won't get healed. Mm. There is no demon that will stand in your presence. Within three minutes, I switched his Christianity in three minutes and pushed him to another realm immediately. Why? Because I have learned to engage with God. Mm. If you are not growing spiritually, you are already disconnected from the voice of God.